they fit a meta regression line to this data, which crossed zero at 500 calories per day, which indicates a deficit of 500 calories per day was predicted to result in zero change in lean mass. Deficits larger than that were predicted to actually yield a reduction in lean mass. Um, but as you can see from the data, if you look at the, the figure, if you happen to pull it up, uh, it, it's kind of like when we talk about that uh, meta-analysis or the meta-regression about protein intake mm -hmm. by Morton and colleagues, where it's like, we can identify a breakpoint, but when you look at the individual data points, you do not see a dramatic area where numbers just fall off a cliff. Like it's not like everybody was doing just fine and then they hit 500 calories per day and you know, lean mass gains tanked. There's definitely a relationship here. As the deficit gets bigger, lean mass changes uh, are harder and harder to come by. And so what that means is if you're trying to achieve recomposition, you wanna keep that general relationship in mind. You don't wanna use that 500 number as a law of physics, you know, because that would be just not at all reflective of the certainty of that number. Um, but you definitely want to keep in mind the fact that if you're trying to build muscle while you're losing fat, you're going to be in an energy deficit. And the larger that deficit gets, the more challenging it becomes to kind of thread that needle and achieve appreciable increases in lean mass while you're achieving that fat loss along the way. So uh, ultimately, my, my conclusion after looking at this meta-analysis and some, uh, some of the related research is uh, recomposition is certainly possible. Uh, and for a lot of people, probably more than you think, it is a feasible goal. Um, and it, it, you are making some degree of sacrifice when you set out to do recomposition, you're kind of accepting on the front end, yeah, I probably could gain lean mass faster if I were in neutral or positive energy balance but what you're trying to do there is uh you know kind of find that sweet spot where you're gaining lean mass at a rate that you're still happy with while also losing fat mass along the way it, it can be a very conven convenient and very time efficient way to make some pretty dramatic body composition change without having to feel like you are fully locked into one route versus the other um so if you check out the article, you'll see that in the, there's kind of a practical application section where I go into detail about how you would adjust energy balance for a variety of different goals. And the way that I tried to quantify that, I think the most uh, straightforward and simple way to quantify that navigation of energy balance or the manipulation of energy balance is just by looking at change in body mass. So the rate of weekly or monthly weight gain or the rate of weekly or monthly weight loss. You know, I, th I think that's the easiest way to look at it. And I don't want to go through and read every possible permutation here because the most likely scenario is I'll just get some numbers jumbled and then cause more confusion. Uh, so to, to get a look at it, so I go through in detail, how would you adjust your rate of weight gain or rate of, uh, rate of weight loss if you're training specifically for strength or specifically for recomposition or specifically for hypertrophy or specifically for fat loss. And so there are some slightly uh, different guidelines for each of those different scenarios. And uh, I also, in, in the process of giving those guidelines, I address the fact that your training age or, or your relative uh, training status is an important factor that modifies how quickly you want to gain or lose some weight. So uh, if you have an opportunity, I definitely recommend that you check out that article to get some of that uh, kind of goal specific advice about what rate of weight loss or rate of weight gain would be right for you based on what you're trying to achieve. Um, but, but the general kind of take home point is a lot of people say that recomposition is either impossible or just simply not feasible. And for a large percentage of lifters, I think that that's simply not true. I, I think it is possible and indeed is actually feasible. Um, it's especially true if you've got plenty of body fat to lose and you're relatively untrained. In that situation, there's a very high likelihood that you can get in an energy deficit that is large enough to get the ball rolling in terms of fat loss without dramatically impairing your ability to get stronger or build muscle. Now, if you are shredded, you're near your genetic ceiling in terms of strength and muscularity, 
in that situation, I I will concede that, you know, dramatic recomposition is probably a bit of a long shot 